Matters. This morning we have made our way to the sweetest pepper in the world. The sweetest pepper sauce in the world. We are here at Marie Sharp. If you've never seen Miss Marie, today is your lucky day. You're always tasting the pepper on the shelf and all the fine stuff she's made. Well, guess what? She's here in person today. Good morning to you, Miss Marie. How are you? Good morning. I'm fine. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about Marie Sharp. Okay. Um, actually, my company started in 1981. So we are like about 32 years old. But uh, when we started, I was an executive secretary working with the Citrus Company of Belize. So really, my, I, I didn't have any idea that this would have happened, right? I, I had a full-time job. My husband inherited the farm, and I think that the, that's, that's what caused it to happen. He inherited the farm, and we used to come down here to the farm and plant some of everything that could grow in Belize, fruits including. We planted every fruit we could lay our hands on. And uh, we started to plant different things until one of my sisters came up with a bright idea. She said, why don't you plant some pepper for Dr. Gordillo, who was a medical officer in Belize City? And he was making a pepper sauce at that time in Belize City. So I thought, well, no problem. I mean, I just went ahead and planted, not thinking that I was supposed to consult Dr. Gordillo first. And that is where all this started from, because when I took my first pickup load of pepper to Dr. Gordillo, then he goes, I said, oh my God, he only uses a little bit. And here I am now stuck with habanero peppers and no market. So I came back home and um, Jerry asked me what you're going to do with it. I said, well, I have to find something to do, but I won't let it go to waste. So I took out my little home blender, the kitchen blender, and I started crushing pepper and putting it into pails and adding salt so that it wouldn't spoil and crushing and going through dozens of blenders because I was asking them to do what they weren't made to do. And, uh, but I blended most of it. And now today you're here. Yes. And that's where it all started because then after that, then he went and said, the, the vehicles can't fit in the garage anymore. It's all pepper. What are you going to do with all that? So one evening I came home and I started playing around with sauces and I made like about eight different pepper sauces. And actually it was one of my friends who came, who put this bright idea in my head. She said, Marie, why don't you sell this? This is better than anything we have on the market in Belize. I said, you think so? He said, yes, this is going to sell. And that's where it started because with that little idea, I went out and I bought myself three stove, the tabletop model that have four burners and three big pots. And every day I had my job, you know, eight to five in the evenings. But I'd cook in at night, three big pots, because one pot per stove, four burners, right? So I had one. Some massive pots. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, one pot per stove. And I, and I would cook um, just three pots every night and have a girl come in during the day and fill bottles. So um, then I started filling my veranda with bottles, right? And that's, where, that's how I started. I worked three years out of my kitchen at home. We're going to hear a lot more about your story as this show go on because I think that people can use it for their own inspiration. Um, sometimes we make so much excuses why we can't. Today you're going to tell them why they can. Of course, um, you can do anything that you put your mind to. It's hard work and it's full time because if you are the inspiration for anything, you have to give it your all. So you have to be there the whole time and be, be you know, putting in every ounce of the, of the minute of the day into what you're doing. And don't think, don't ever think that you get rich overnight. It doesn't happen. I'm at this 32 years and I still can't retire. I'm still waiting for the day when I can put my feet up. And it looks like I'm only just getting there after 32 years. That is a very valuable lesson to learn. Uh, what's happening behind us now? A little diversion, but what's happening behind us? Um, yes, um, because all the fruit that we work with is seasonal. But during the fruit season, all these women that you see here are new workers. Every year we have to take on new people. And usually I like to give the opportunity to the girls from the high school that live in the neighborhood because then they use the money to, to get them ready for the new school year but school is not over yet. Um, we have to do this right now because the mangoes are green 
and we want them for the green mango chutney. So we are preparing the green mangoes right now and uh, what we don't use right away we freeze. And if you're wondering why we're wearing these beautiful headpieces is to prevent our hair from falling in there. I don't have much hair but the little hair, both of us have about the same amount of hair. It's to prevent the little hair because like the lady said to us before we were coming, before I got in she says, so if your hair drop in the pepper and flavor the pepper, what part we are find you for when people want that flavor there? <laughs> so you know, try to keep the flavors consistent. How do you keep it so consistent every time? Um, when I walk you through the factory, you're going to understand because our, our <clears throat> pepper sauces are made by vats. So we have 10,000 liter tanks that we fill and we have a formula. Okay. So with having the formula, we have to produce the same thing every time. It's down to a science. Yes. Yeah. We're going to move inside the uh, building to see some of the other process that's taking place right here at Marie Sharp's Fine Foods. This is the crushing room. The habanero peppers are received out there, weighed, and then it comes in here. It's selected, it's um, washed, sanitized, and then it goes into the crushing, to the, to the hammer mill. And then that crushes it into, into um, pulp. From there, it's put, into, it's put into carts, and the carts are moved outside, and we take them to the holding vats outside. That's the raw habanero pepper. Uh, the finished product. The finished product comes out from the pots through this line here. It comes into that tank over there. In there, the guys will climb up, up there and take their test, the, the samples that they need for testing. And if they do their test and it passes, then it drops into the middle, it's ground, and then it goes to the holding tanks. So all the vats that you see back there is pepper sauce. Is your, is the, do you have one base pepper sauce and then everything is made from that sauce, like different variation or different amounts is used for different kinds of pepper? Because I noticed you have different, um, levels of heat on the shelf. You have some that's like super hot and then you have some that's kind of sweet hot. Yes. Um, well, we have one, <clears throat> we have a couple that are different. We have um, in the red variety, we have, uh, let me see, like about five that are from one base and then the heat level just keeps going up. But there is a sixth one in there that's red also that has a completely different formula because it has in um, tomato. It has in tomato, so that is a different, that's the Belizean heat. Now where are we, Miss Marie? Uh, now we are in this area where we do, we hold the habanero pepper mash. This pepper is ground already with salt and it's in the vats. So we have 18, 10,000 liter tanks back here with pepper mash. And that is our reserve, right? It's 18, 10,000 liter tanks. We hold back here as much as half a million pounds of habanero pepper in our tanks. Suncast is giving away a brand new Whirlpool washing machine with Purex and 123. All you have to do to enter is these three simple steps. One, buy any Purex liquid detergent or 123 and Purex soap powders. Two, get a ticket from your cashier. Three, write your name, address, and phone number on the ticket and you put it in the Purex raffle box. Participating stores are Curzal, Season Supermarket and Family, Orinjua, The People's Store, Belize City, Bottom Dollar Supermarket, Save You Supermarket, in Cayo is Three Fags and Lynn Supermarket, in Belmopan, The Mall, in Dangriga it's Grigalizian and Family Supermarket. San Pedro, it's Savon Supermarket, Public Supermarket, and San Pedrana Supermarket. Key Parker, it's Chan Minimart, Independence, Ming Supermarket, and PG, it's James Supermarket. So remember, buy Purex today and win a brand new Whirlpool washing machine. Welcome to Dave's Furniture World. How may I help you today? I have a few things that I'm looking for, ma'am. I've designed the perfect pieces of furniture to fit my bedroom and dining room, but I can't find it in any store. My bed design requires a special mattress size. Please tell me you can help get this done for me. 
Today is your lucky day, sir. At Dave's Furniture World, we produce the finest custom-made furniture. We do special orders on mattresses to ensure that it fits your bed just right. Have a look around the store and I'm sure that you'll see that you can choose from a wide variety of furniture, household appliances, and also gift items. You can also take a look at our Facebook page and make orders directly from there. Oh, thank you so much. You've been of great help. Dave's Furniture World, located at 53 Basra and Tigris Street in Belize City. Visit us today. Dave's, where you imagine it and we build it. With the largest inventory of vehicles in the industry, Crystal Auto Rental is a leader in its class. We provide reliable, comfortable, and the latest models of vehicles for your rental convenience. We offer free pickup and drop-off for our customers. For reservations, give us a call at 223-1600. Or visit us online at crystal-belize.com. Coming at the end of May, we will be having a massive clearance sale where you will find over 100 quality vehicles. Stop in at mile 5 on the Northern Highway and preview the vehicle of your choice. Or go online at www.carunlimitedbelize.com. Crystal Auto Rental, providing the most reliable and comfortable transportation for you. Build your future with Belize's leading development finance institution, DFC. We finance development projects in sectors of education, housing, agriculture and agro-processing, manufacturing, tourism, small and micro-enterprise, and much more, all at affordable interest rates and flexible repayment terms. We also offer free in-house property valuations, free sound financial and technical guidance for projects, affordable building and life insurance coverage, under DFC's group insurance scheme and more. So what are you waiting for? Take advantage of DFC's efficient delivery of loans and related services and get a step closer to building your future. Visit any of our nearest offices for additional information or call us at 822-2350 or 822-2360. DFC, realizing Belizean dreams, your partner in development. Seaboard Marine, a leader in ocean transportation, is now offering services to Belize. Offering the fastest and most reliable transit to Belize, Seaboard Marine is the number one choice for shipping. We offer shipping of less than container loads, such as boxes, barrels, and chilled cargo. Full dry and refrigerated containers, project cargo, heavy and special equipment, vehicles, and more. We have sailings from Canada, Houston, New Orleans, Miami, the Caribbean, Central and South America. Seaboard Marine offers the most competitive rates with a fast and dependable shipping schedule, excellent customer service, and a convenient location with plenty of parking. Visit our office, website, or call us for more information. Side. We have air conditioning, we've taken off our headdresses, we're back to normal. <laughs> this must be your favorite part of the business, sitting in here? It certainly is. It makes a big difference being in here than, than in there. Take <clears throat> me back to the first years. Um, I know we spoke briefly about it earlier, but I want to, for you to tell me and to share with people some of your struggles because most people that have made a name, even if they have not made it rich, if they've made a name for themselves, people think that it happened overnight. Share some of your struggles with me and how you got over them, if you please. Um, it does not happen overnight. And it takes your all. So you have to be really into what you're doing, like what you're doing, love what you're doing, because you're going to live it, dream it, you wake and sleep with it. It takes a lot of hard work, a lot of hard work. You live, you sleep, you dream what you're doing. Um, you have a lot of struggles because here in Belize, it's, it's not a difficult place to work in. You know, you don't have um, the facility of having uh, workable money. 
When I started up until, um, I would think, almost three years ago, I worked with money from the, from the commercial banks. So I was paying anywhere from 16 to 15% money, and that was what I was working with the whole, my whole, in my whole existence. And, and that's not funny because you end up working for the banks. Um, if, we had, if we had development money that you could work with, it would make life so much easier. But the way I came up, we had to be struggling the whole, our whole existence, we had to struggle. Um, you have to make a name for yourself. How did you manage to do that? That is um, from, the in, from the inception of my doing my products. Um, I thought it out well because I, had, I came up with the idea of not making a pepper sauce, but making something different from the pepper sauces on the market. And you continue to do that each and every day because when you started out, I would imagine you started with one kind of hot sauce. Right. Now, 32 years later, what do you have? I have like about, I would think, um, 11 hot sauces, a total of 11 hot sauces. So, um, you know, it's, it's, we've been adding on to the line and we keep on adding. Um, but the main, the main thing here is that you, you make something different and you make something good. You can't make a cheap product because you will never ever succeed that way. You have to make a good product and regardless of how much it costs you, you have to look at what the market has on its shelves and you have to fit in there, not because yours is better or more expensive. You think you're going to get in there and charge $5 a bottle because your name good or your product good or whatever. No, you have to be competitive. What are some of the challenges that you faced as a person besides the money issue when you started your business? Well, I mean, do you have children? Yes, I do. I have, I, have, um, I have three boys of my own and I have seven of, for my husband and I, I, I can say all of them are mine because I raised them all. Yes, people make excuses why they can't. Tell me how you did. Um, well, I think my children were, um, they would say, half grown. I didn't have little ones, so they were all more or less, I would say, high school age when I started doing this, because I didn't start doing this as a young person. I started in my mid middle age, you know, when I started doing this. So um, I didn't have, well, I still had to make sure that they got something to eat. I had a full-time job. What? prevented you from getting discouraged in 32 years I am sure that you must have felt like giving up at some point in time especially when there was no money what kept you going I'll tell you what when I lost my name in the first instance when I lost the name Melinda because tell me a little bit about that for people that don't know that story I lost the name Melinda to my first distributors in the US in 1992 92 um, Melinda was the original name that I started making my products with because the, because we grow some of everything that we use on the farm, I thought that the ideal name for the product would have been Melinda. And since I came out with that name. Unfortunately, the first person that I linked up with that was my, <laughs> my, my um, exclusive distributor for the US trademarked the name for himself in the States. So I ended up losing that name, not because um, I could have got it back if I had the money to fight. I didn't. So I eventually I had to give up the name in exchange for breaking a contract because he also had me uh, tied to a contract where he was my exclusive distributor. So you stopped giving him products and he could have kept the name? Yes. You didn't share your secret with him? And he thought that I had, but I didn't. <laughs> what do you mean he thought you had? Well, he had asked me for the formula, but I mean, I was um, full fool, as you'd say it in those days, right? But not that full fool. So I gave him something that I just made up. You gave him something similar, but Sim not quite. Right, exactly. So, so you, were, you had your game then? Yes. You were on your game? Yes. Because when he started then making it in Costa Rica, he made up a couple of containers and took it to the States. He started popping up in the stores like firecracker, right? So then, then I just had my laugh, right? He had something, so, but he didn't have everything. Exactly, 
right? He didn't have everything. So um, when I lost my name in that first instance, I barely thought of throwing in my towel because the main thing was, again, financing. I, because I lost the name, I had lost a lot of money too because I started fighting. I started going to lawyers in the States and going up to the States. And, and I had just bought a container load of pepper mash for, from them for, from Costa Rica. So I had to throw it away. So I'd lost a lot of money. So um, I thought that I had to give up. And actually, I cried day and night. I got into my bed and curled up and cried. And actually, it was one of my customers in New York that called me. And he said, Marie, what is going on? And I told him. He said, listen to me. You get out of that bed. That is not you. You oh. get out the bed. You get on your knees and you pray and ask God to give you strength. And you get up from there and you're going to make it. And you know, I got out of my bed. I prayed. I came down to the farm. And actually, I was down here. When I looked, I saw a vehicle driving in, in the farm. And uh, when I looked, it was the bankers, Barclays. I used to deal with Barclays Bank at that time. And it was the manager for Barclays Bank, uh, the big manager for Belize City, and um, the manager from CARICOM for agriculture. And some, about three of them came. And he came and he hugged me up. His name was Mr. Hunt. I can still remember him up there today. <laughs> he came and he hugged, him, hugged me up and he said, Marie, we heard what happened. He said, but I came here and I'm telling you now, you come to us and we'll finance you again. Amen. God is good. Yes. So they put me back on my feet and I started working again. And I said to, I said to myself, to those people in the States, you are now looking at your worst nightmare. Amen to because that. Because I'm, I'm going to be your worst nightmare from today onwards. And I came back fighting. And from that time until now, I haven't stopped. <laughs> well, congratulations. Um, when did you start exporting? I started exporting in 1982 in small quantities to the US. And actually, I took that and I blew it up in the media. Marie Sharp now in the US, because I tell you, Belize, Belize was a difficult market, you know. Because, you know, Belizeans feel like nothing made in Belize good. It has, it to, has to go out and get recognition right. and come out. It's kind of like how they treat yes, us. Yes. <laughs> so once I took the, 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 the little portion that I sold into the U.S. and I blew it up in the media. Oh, Marie Sharp's now in the U.S. After that, my day, I just saw my, sa my sales start climbing. If you're good for America, it must good for me. Yes. And so today, I'm very proud to say that I, I, have a, I feel like I have like about 99.9% .9 of the Belize market. I think everybody, every Belizean uses Marie Sharp, some of Marie Sharp product, whatever product it is. The funniest thing is when, when people go to the restaurants, we don't ask for pepper. We said, anybody Marie Sharp? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it, is, it is so natural for people to not ask for pepper, but they ask for Marie Sharp. You have trained us well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you have yes. absolutely trained yes. us well. When did you start moving into other products? Um, when I started um, marketing my own pepper in, in Belize here, I started going out with just the pepper sauce. And I said, hey, wait, I am going out using my gas and my time and everything. And I'm, I used to do this on weekends. And, and I'm selling one product, you know. So, I mean, I have to find something else to take to, to really make it worth my while. So then I started thinking, what can I do? And then I, I thought of fruits. I said to myself, you know, when it's mango season, you have mangoes to stone dog with. I mean, we have guavas that nobody use. Just the birds eat it. If you have a tree in your yard, you'll probably eat one or two or so on. But, you know, there's no use for it apart from that. Um, bananas, we export bananas and so many bananas are just thrown away. And I said, what can I do? And then I thought of the jams. And that's when I started making, making up a, a line of jams. And today my jams are doing exceptionally well because we have a higher than FDA required fruit contents, no preservatives, no food color. We use unrefined sugar cane sugar. So it's as natural as we can get it. And we have nine varieties of jams and jellies, all Belizean fruit. And I'm not saying this because I'm in front of you, but 
I from ever since enjoyed Murray Sharp mixed fruit jam. That that is my favorite Murray Sharp jam product. I don't know why. I mean, like my other people in my family like the guava, but if I'm supposed to, yes, this one right here. <laughs> this one is my favorite one, and the guava is right next to it. Amazing, okay. and I promise I didn't see that. But um, I'm sure that ever so often you come up with new ideas. You come oh, up yes. with, with creative ideas. What is oh, the yes. latest product you're working on now? Um, I did the Belizean seasonal, which is, um, which is, you know, the Ricardo that we use to season our meats with that's sold in blocks. Well, I've made a liquid form of the Ricardo, and where the, the black one has in some mensa, mine has no mensa in it. Mine is pure annatto, the spices, and it has in onions and garlic and everything that you need to, to, to season your meat with. So tell me how you use this mixed seasonal. It's a liquid that you just pour on your chicken? It's a liquid, um, liquid annatto. And it has everything that you need to season your chicken with. That's it? Onions. It has in um, garlic. It has in all the seasonings. It has in... So you just... This is a Marie Sharp complete seasoning in a bottle? Yes. And it red? Yes. No, man. Yes. You know, that I could see all the, Amer all the Belizean Americans. When I'm going to the States, my friends want Ricardo. Mm -hmm. No, I could hear them. They want Ricardo. They want Marie Sharp. Pepper, no, they want Marie Sharp seeds now. Yes. I hope you're not here right now here <laughs> because I know they bring down Fono. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Marie, what keeps you going every day? Um, I guess it's because I'm doing what I, what I love to do. I love to... Um, do research and development. I love to research new products. I, if I had more money, I could produce so many more different products. Um, except that my husband tell me, don't make any more. <laughs> but believe it or not, at every agriculture show, people expect me to come out with yes. a new product. It's true. Every show that I go to, Miss Marie, what is your new product? Because I know every time you come out here, you have a new product. So, um, it's just, I guess it's because I'm doing what I like to do. For somebody out there that is, they have their dream, but they find so many reasons why they can't. Give them one reason why they can. Um, of course you could. It just depends on how much you want to put into it. You can. And never say that you can't. You can. There are means and ways of doing things, and you can do it if you put your mind to it. You can do it. For some other people out there that are maybe in their upper 30s, in their 40s, that have never had their business but always wanted, and then they think in their mind, you know, I'm too old now. What would you say to them? You're never too old for anything. You know, I wasn't prepared for all this that, I, that I'm doing now, you know. But with the help of um, USAID, remember USAID used to be in Belize, a Chamber of Commerce, the government of Belize, and I got sent all over. I went to Clemson University when I must have been in my 40s. And everybody else were young people there. You think I care? No, but I am learning. And I need to learn because this is what I'm doing. I went to Clemson and I did a food packaging course at Clemson with the help of USAID. I mean, I'm, I don't turn on anything. They send me, they have a, a, a course going on, on marketing. Barbados, I go. Uh, good manufacturing practices in Jamaica, I go, and I, it, I never did stop. And I wasn't a young person. It's so because you're you never wanted. too old to learn. You're never too old to learn. Never. Thank you very much, Miss Marie. Thank you for sharing some of your story with us this morning. Thank you for what I think was an ins or is an inspiration to other people, but also to other women, because I feel far too often we find reasons why we can't. You're a good example of why, you, why we can. I mean, after that first blow, a lot of people would have decided, you know what, this is not for me. I can't afford to do this anymore. I don't mm -hmm. have any money. I need to go back and work. Mm -hmm. You know, you are, a li are living proof that um, it can happen if you want it bad enough. You went from just distributing in, um, from here, then you went to America, now you're all over the world. All over the world. All over the world. And it hasn't stopped, you know. Because the challenges are there all the time. All the time the challenges are there. I mean, in Walmart, we had Tabasco side by side with us. And Tabasco probably see the movement of the Marisha pepper sauce. But she said, who this, who this lady? Who is this? Who would this come from? Next thing I know, I get a letter from Tabasco. 
take away the diamond off your label. The diamond belongs to us. Did you take it off? I had to remove it. <laughs> I can't fight the basket. The basket is a multi-million dollar. But your sauce it. kept on. Plain people didn't weren't buying it then because of the diamond. Heart, I put a heart on it, and I, then I go. The whole world loves Marie Sharp. And Amen. then we see what what they what they, they can say about that. They help you to make though. it better every exactly. time. Exactly. Exactly. You just have to come back fighting every time. I mean, I got into China when I look. I was in Beijing first. No, um, um, Shanghai. We got into Shanghai. And then we sold, we, we made another shipment to Beijing. And next thing I know, the guy in Shanghai is trademarking Marie Sharp in China. The one in Beijing had to send and tell us, you know, that guy is trademarking your name. Can't do that. I had to hurry, send him money and tell him, please, on my behalf, get a lawyer, put a stop to it. I am Marie Sharp and I had to send him all my company registration, send him all my to put a stop to it. You were gonna go out twice. Yes. If you weren't careful yes. enough. But God is on your side. You have to, be, uh, you can't give up. It's, it's a constant battle staying out there. It's, you know, people are out there and, and don't worry. If they can drag you down, they will. But you just have to not give up and fight it. And you know, you stick in there. You stick in there. Miss Marisa, keep on keeping on. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing your time with me today. I definitely look forward to our next meeting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you too. And thank you all of Belize. Buy Dutch Lady and win cash of up to $16,000. You can be the lucky winner of cash prizes ranging anywhere between $100 to $500. All you have to do to enter is buy Dutch Lady products, tear off the label and fill out your personal information. That includes your name, your address, your phone number, and don't forget your favorite school. The drawing will be done in several different areas, including the North, Corazal Orange Walk, the West, Belma Pancayo, Central Belize, including Belize City and the Keys, and the South, including Dangriga, Independence, Placencia, and Punta Gorda. The drawing dates are on June 30th, September 30th, and double cash on December 20th. You hurry it folks, double cash. That means you get $4,000 on June 30th, $4,000 on September 30th, and $8,000 on December 20th. But it doesn't stop there. You can win a brand new stove for your favorite school. All you have to do is nominate your favorite school on the label of the Dutch Lady Condensed or Evaporated Milk and drop it in the box. So. Buy a Dutch Lady today and win a brand new store for your favorite school. With the largest inventory of vehicles in the industry, Crystal Auto Rental is a leader in its class. We provide reliable, comfortable, and the latest models of vehicles for your rental convenience. We offer free pickup and drop off for our customers. For reservations, give us a call at 223-1600 or visit us online at crystal-belize.com. Coming at the end of May, we will be having a massive clearance sale where you will find over 100 quality vehicles. Stop in at mile 5 on the Northern Highway and preview the vehicle of your choice. Or go online at www.carunlimitedbelize.com. Crystal Auto Rental, providing the most reliable and comfortable transportation for you. And welcome back to Morning Matters. We've made a shift. We're still in Dan Grega. We've moved from Marie Sharp and now we are at Pelican Beach Resort. With right. me, I have Brother David. Brother David is known through the length and breadth of this country. And uh, I would like to introduce him to the Caribbean. I'm sure that people out there know him as well. And to my viewers this morning, Brother David, good morning. How are you? Good morning, my sister. And thanks very much for having me on the show. It is such yeah. a pleasure to have you on the show. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, how much time we have? <laughs> Come here, leave it. Yes. Yeah. No. Um, I was born in Belize City, and I was raised in Dangriga. This is my hometown. You have one of the most beautiful hometowns. Um, Speaking of beauty, this is a beautiful beach we're sitting on today. I yeah, mean, this is Pelican Resort. Pelican Resort, and um, this is one of our main hotels in Dangriga. 
right? We have a few other nice hotels too, but this is one of our main hotels. And of course, um, we live right down the street from here. This is Stone Straw. Yeah, went to Methodist School right here in Danrega. What was life like growing up in Danrega? Beautiful, like it is today and even better. Um, I was fortunate to be raised by my grandparents, right? And my grandparents raised me. And um, my uncle used to go to the farm every day, six days a week. And my grand aunt stayed at home, right? So I got very good care. They make sure I got to school on time. Give me a good education, you know? You're a disciplined good, man. Like, disciplined. And at the same time, we had so much, just like we still do, things in Adam, we have to enjoy. We have the sea, we have the river, we have all these fruits. And in the end of school used to be out in May when it's so hot, so we used to always be in the river, you know, mango, papaya, anything, all kind of foods, cashew. So I grew up in our nice, nice environment. And of course, we have the drums of Africa. So every day in the end of we never had radio. So most of the time, a drum. If somebody banned, you hear the drum knock. If somebody dead, somebody, you hear the drum knock. If that part, so we grew up to hear the natural sound of music. And I'm sure that have to do in many cases with the creativity, we come out of this this town. True. That's why we call it the cultural capital. Of this the is the culture capital of Belize. This is where, like you said, um, most of the music come out of. Yeah, the power of the Belizean music. Tell me a little bit about your musical career. Well, again, like I said, because we grew up in Adangriga, yeah, we play the drums there, which is the heartbeat of the music. And listening to the Garifuna people sing you're, you're there closer to Africa so you're there closer to your roots I get for love music I guess from that time I really up to today really love the Jankuna music that one of my main music where I like you know, different sing at least something for me or Jankuna ah, well, well, amo, ah, well, amo, blessed mother who live to see a another kind of music but I love that music the beat actually that, that the warrior music the Jankuna music and um, finally, I left and I got to Belize, got to technical uh, school. I get to meet one young lady by the name of Erica Maxine. She used to play the guitar, and she was willing to teach me the guitar. And um, but before that, I, I used to uh, now and again run away um, on the weekend and, and go listen to the messengers with Chuck Ladin and um, um, and uh, so Lied, lead singer Lied, and drummer Lied, and uh, J Corp and bass. That are the messengers way before, and I'm totally inspired by Chuck Ladin, the guitarist. That's one of the most famous Belizean guitarists. We're not here about one that, right? Um, so I'm again inspired by him for want to play the guitar. And then after that, coincidentally, I run into um, Erica. Okay. And Erica started actually teach me the guitar. So I always feel indebted to Erica because she had the first one way. way teach me something funny. Chuck kind of inspired me but Erica would teach me the guitar. But without Chuck's inspiration Erica's teaching would have been no value yeah. because you would have had no interest. Correct. So what uh, are you working on these days? Um, right now because I released it you know the last four or five years nearly every year we release one album. What was your latest album? Um, Day the Dan. Day the Dan. They mean like Day the Call? Yes. Sing and, something and, for and, me, man. You know I like Ali singing. And, and they, they done with the work for man in Kukuru, Kukuru, and cultural song today. But the idea is why I named the album Daddy Dana because I really seen our country uh, where people, they wake up, they start to things in a reality. You know, slowly, but where they come, right? We're 31 years old. So when you're 31, young. yeah, you think you know, but you don't really know. And a lot of times I say, well, what do you mean, brother David? One of these years, you understand what that means. But so technically, you older than Belize. Yes, man. Yeah, you know, life. See, unfortunately for me, because I travel too, I get a chance to travel and see other things in the world. So automatically, you get much older than your country. You know, if you're not gone nowhere, then you, you know, well, you're the putting your time in your country. That that is who you are. And no TV, they help, but that help good and bad. But we will live somewhere else and travel. And other people. You see other things. It's very important. That's why they say. Traveling is so important in your life. They're not just to get the ride at the plane or in the bus, but the things you encounter when you travel. And then it, it makes you appreciate where you have home even more. You know, that's one of the reasons you know why it could enjoy Danwega. People come from all over the world, yeah, for one week or two weeks and then no one left. Yeah, you live. Yeah, you live. Serious thing. Tell me what you think the importance of music in somebody's life is. Well, remember now, in the beginning, the song was with Ja. Only that made it a song. 
that are how important song is in our life. Long before we, even here with the sea where they behind me. There's song. The wind. Mm -hmm. You dig? So music to a song. And also, when you put certain notes together, you get harmony, you get things where feel good. Or you could put things together and make you feel sad. Your music it helps for enhance your emotion? Yes, very much so. You remember King Saul when he be all worried and he had haggard about Goliath and he had to bring David to make him play the, the harp for cool and don't music does this thing with cool. You know, we just comfort the world with the music. Look on Jamaica, man. Yes. That's our Lee Island, small and believe, you know, and put out more music than any other country in the world right now. See the power of them people right there, so true music. But when they have forgotten, we could just see right there with the Garifuna people, the power of the Garifuna music, put them right in at the cultural element where for a long time and you try to find one spot amongst the other ethnic groups. No, they stand out. True music for start with. But not only music, the thing where we have to watch closely because with Belizean music in many cases, like one of the weaknesses of the Punta Rock music, that the message we want to put in at the music now, that, that the next thing. That music, is very music important. Music that one thing, but the message we want to put in at the music, very, very important. I'm going to stop you right there for a minute and we are going to take a quick commercial break and when we come back we'll be inviting on uh, Ernesto Ball, he is Tipa Ball, he is one of your students for lack of a better term and um, we had him on before but I would like to see the comparison from where he is and where he came from as opposed to where you are and where you came from and how both of your lives kind of intertwine at some point in yeah. time. Okay. Take I, a break. Well I know you do it. <laughs> Suncast is giving away a brand new Whirlpool washing machine with Purex and 123. All you have to do to enter is these three simple steps. One, buy any Purex liquid detergent or 123 and Purex soap powders. Two, get a ticket from your cashier. Three, write your name, address and phone number on the ticket and you put it in the Purex raffle box. Participating stores are Curzal, Season Supermarket and Family, Orangewa, The People's Store, Belize City, Bottom Dollar Supermarket, Save You Supermarket, in Cayo is Three Fags and Lynn Supermarket, in Dalmopan, The Mall, in Dangriga it's Grigalesian and Family Supermarket, San Pedro it's Savon Supermarket, Public Supermarket and San Pedrana Supermarket, Key Parker it's Chan Minimart, Independence Ming Supermarket and PG It's James Supermarket. So remember, buy Purex today and win a brand new Whirlpool washing machine. Build your future with Belize's leading development finance institution, DFC. We finance development projects in sectors of education, housing, agriculture and agro-processing, manufacturing, tourism, small and micro enterprise, and much more, all at affordable interest rates and flexible repayment terms. We also offer free in-house property valuations, free sound financial and technical guidance for projects, affordable building and life insurance coverage under DFC's group insurance scheme, and more. So what are you waiting for? Take advantage of DFC's efficient delivery of loans and related services, and get a step closer to building your future. Visit any of our nearest offices for additional information or call us at 822-2350 or 822-2360. DFC, realizing Belizean dreams, your partner in development. Seaboard Marine, a leader in ocean transportation, is now offering services to Belize. Offering the fastest and most reliable transit to Belize, Seaboard Marine is the number one choice for shipping. We offer shipping of less than container loads, such as boxes, barrels, and chilled cargo. Full dry and refrigerated containers, project cargo, heavy and special equipment, vehicles, and more. We have sailings from Canada, Houston, New Orleans, Miami, the Caribbean, Central and South America. Seaboard Marine offers the most competitive rates with a fast and dependable shipping schedule, excellent customer service, and a convenient location with plenty of parking. Visit our office, website, or call us for more information.
Welcome back to Morning Matters. This segment we are going to be having in Ernesto Ball as well as Brother David. Good morning, Ernesto. How are you? Uh, good morning, Randa. I am doing quite well, actually. Thank you for having me. <laughs> well, it's definitely a pleasure having you and uh, Brother David sitting in the same place. Um, you guys come from uh, different walks of life all together and you are here together today. Uh, Brother David, tell me, um, what was the first kind of music you started out with? Um, like like we, we, we chat a little bit just now and carry me back a little bit farther than where I mean to think. But when we talk about it, we realize a no ball fine, a Lee, Lee youth, small, small boy, along with my son, Indio. So I acquainted him briefly that, that, that way. And I watch him grow. And I watch him grow, grow all through Belmopan. And I think, like you mentioned, we officially kind of pay attention one day to the bliss when he may look for dance, uh, become a dancer with the Cuban dance group. But since that time, as bad as you know, the street, we always meet, and whenever we meet, the vibe is always good. Well, quite frankly, I um, I was always I always love reggae music, and I've also I've always loved all types of music. But out of Belize, beside the older bands like Bambike Bandula and Bablan Juarez and stuff, but David was like the man for me that was dropping you know those songs like children and experience and those those songs seems to like was talking to me and so um, he was the Belizean artist for me at the time that I really look up to that I could say well this is somebody that is not I'm not just hearing this person on the radio I see him pass by sometimes and again me and uh, uh, David Obi Jr., a.k.a. Ras Indio, were good friends, and so there was always a connection there, you know. What is the biggest lesson you've learned from Brother David? To be original in your music, and, uh, and, and, and um, definitely um, anything you want to achieve in life, you can do it. You can go for it, never give up, stay positive. You know, give praises to God, and that will be uh, ultimately what will guide you to accomplish anything that you set out to accomplish. Well, gentlemen, you know you just didn't come here to talk about music. I'm sure you know that. I like the fact that I have two men on today, and you guys can help me out with some morning matters some real morning matters i'm sure that both of you have different experience in life um you're a married man you have children you have grown children um ball is not a married man i don't imagine um but he does have children so um and both of you in some way um are good examples of good men today what a day what a day it seemed like it's such a long day but it's a beautiful day nonetheless day, girl. you know and thanks very much again for remember for coming me and show that down when I think Dan Grigga, I think Brother David, yeah, then go together. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> you know, one without the other is like rice without beans. <laughs> exactly. Well, now let's have a little fun. What do you think um, is the cause nowadays for so many relationships just not working out? Well, quite naturally, you know, time change. That's the first thing, you know. We, we, we mentality change, we're exposed to a lot of different things now. Then, then, and then thing may always, you know, way too, you know, it's just that. I think now we, we, everybody know where they where they going. Like a lot of wars may already there, but now with the city. So you think like more war day. You know, so when I, I have a nice smile I hear about people with the problem and none again I used to when I was nearby used to beat for him why sometimes it used to be strange I hear this day they cry and they cry, you know. And I used to remember this even I grew up and I like, why this used to happen. And um, I remember I come back home and I asked the lady where used to live upstairs, I say Miss so and so, you remember how this man and this lady used to fight? So and so, so lady, no, I had a big man, no, so she could tell me where they go on. Right? I say, he said, What you used to pay attention to it? I tell her, Yes, because sometimes, for a long time, he had any fight, and I didn't want to why didn't carry house where I grew up with my grandparents, so they don't fight, then they argue. <laughs> you know what I mean? He said, It's a strange occurrence. Strange thing to me. So this, the lady said, He said, No, I said, that lady, he said, Hey, you want to have to beat me this evening. This, this is where the lady tell the lady when they were upset. He said, you have to beat me this evening. So they say, well, why are you on that? He said, because I don't know how to make love. 
You've got to be kidding. Strange since you asked me about matters. The first thing we come, can I come and I ask the lady about that? And he said, um, he said, so they said, the way you want to make it beat you, then he said, I know exactly where for to make it half a beat me tonight. Are you kidding me? I'm telling you, so you never know in you know, this world where really they go on with things. When a lady tell, that's why that's sticking in my mind, so because now that I asked the lady, why they used to fight, I never used to see no reason for why they have a fight, and leave why they wrong. But when the lady explained to me that the lady that tell her, he said, This evening, yeah, you have to beat me. And so on, so on, so on, so on. Then kind of love them in a while, you know? Nope. Well, I don't ever love that, you know, I just to tell you a <laughs> situation. I <laughs> call that love. But I, I throw it on matter as well, want a different kind of thing where sometimes you're sitting in the at people's house, but you don't know that what? So still tell them business? Easier, unless they come to you. You know, like with me, unless you come and you ask me advice, and if I got one, I'll share it with you. Me not going in and nobody's business. Not even in my children in situation, I don't bother it unless they ask me. But if I have an opinion when you ask me, I want to tell you the truth. So you will not share your opinion with your children's situation unless asked? Well, certain kind of things. You know what I mean? Certain kind of things. You have to be wise. You can't just put your mouth near people and pick me and thing all the time. You know, that and all. Some people do that, right? But that and all healthy thing for that. At least not from my perspective. I think it feel better when you're going to say that so and so, what do you think? No, you can let off, can I ask? <laughs> if you give if you ask so if you give if I tell you the truth and you know that you want yeah, you can't say nothing, you understand? So I, that to me and as a Parent, one grandparent, I find that to be one much better position for the inner for share with your children. And maybe that because I never grew up with my mom, my partner, so nobody never there for intruding on my life, you know. So I, I, I don't know that kind of method either. I think that's a good method. Um, I think that, I mean, maybe a little balance. I think sometimes parents are just too much in their children's lives. Yeah. But I think putting it out there is not too bad either. You know, Rhonda, I really, this is how I feel about Tom Jones. And leave it alone. Yeah. Not beat it in my ears, because the more you beat it, the less I hear. Well, that kind of thing, yes. You know, and like that, you know, you know, but that, no, no, the jump no, out and that thing, yeah. You know, you, you, you say something, you say it, and that's it. You just try to observe that when you say it, you know they hear you. Cause you could tell when people hear you and when they don't hear you. And when they ignore you. Yes, so if you say it and you, you, say, you know, hear it, sometimes you still left it to another time, but I know you never hear me. Then I want to say it to another time. So that when, when I know you hear me, then I don't need it. You and my pa wants to go to the same school. Well, I don't know which group your pa, but I wouldn't be surprised if they're from the same time in your sick. The, the time we have grown up, a lot for do it. 70 something. Yeah, I, I did a 65, so we're not there too far off. Yeah. We're not there too far off. You know, and, and, and the principles in the end is like, like what we mean, the same one, a lot different for No, You know, for one, mothers have to go to work with, never used to happen on that kind of scale. And then when you go to work, you turn into another kind of human being, you know, sister. You know, you're not the same kind of woman again. Funny you should say that. The other day I was talking to a gentleman in Cayo and he said to me, you know, Rhonda, he said, I don't want no more career woman, you know. He said, my next woman was stay home. <laughs> I didn't say it's not that way for happening. You know? I just say, when the, when the person, when he start work, he turn into another, that don't mean he have turn, that don't mean a bad person he turn into. He just, I don't want, you know, this one person, we have to get up to a certain time, go down, so go to work, you have to come back, then you come home, you know. So this, this is not like one, this is not a housewife, this is one different, human being and you do this every day five days or maybe six days a week you understand so something will change about you and i think that it changed for the better because i think it teaches our children if if it's done correctly it teaches our children how to be responsible and how to sustain themselves on their own for a little bit because somebody else i was talking to and they attributed the and i don't mean any disrespect to our men because i have a lot of belizean brothers that are my blood brothers. I have three brothers. Um, but we find that our men are a different set of men than, let's say, North American men. They are not as, I mean, our men are, they need that extra nurturing. They need that mothering. They really need that mothering. And, and that could be, uh, what do you think, Bo? <laughs> they need that mothering. What do you think, Bo? I wouldn't want to say mother, I mean, if, uh, I, from, but, uh, I, well. I think, I think, I mean, the majority of the Belizean men. Being a Belizean man yourself. I mean, but I'm not just a Belizean man, I'm, I'm an exposed Belizean Yeah, that, that, again, the women are terrible, again, with the exposure. Here and there and there, yeah. but um, I see a lot of Belizean men, young and even, uh, I wouldn't say old, but middle aged Why? 
Why? Good question. Help me out here. No, but I, 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 you see, we only I don't know nothing about that because they got to just know. You come from the whole school. Yeah, my man raised me for to start with. I know got that kind of overtone. Thank God. To, and then, then I, I lived in another country for a long time, so I know that to me, easier for you a woman be equal. Equality easier, if, but then to make your man be equal to you, you know, have to depend on some kind of brainwave together. You have to choose one where equal to you in at the beginning. Correct. You understand? Otherwise, then that the weapon you have the, the difference so on the, the gap and too wide. But 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 that but that, that that thing with the mothering thing and so no man, you see like with, with affection and with love that come naturally between two of them. Whatever that is, you know. That mothering that I had to talk about them, brother David, that one different kind of mothering. I don't mean affectionate mothering. I mean you need to help me provide. You are the one with bringing the money. You have to make sure food up on the table. You have to iron my shirt. You still have to do all and anything there. And then the brother, he want enjoy me air conditioning. No, 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 no. If you love one woman, you want help her with everything. For start with, if the iron and you see something else, where me and the girl, which one I know want help you with? Which one do you want to do? That, that, that way, if you love somebody, you want to think that way about the person. You Brother are, David, any more are you there? I don't know. <laughs> no, but this is the reality. You, 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 have, you have to think in terms of helping your partner every way you can beat down your partner. Because you see, every time you help your partner, and she leave it more restful. You want to get that back anyway, my brother. You see, the, 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 you think anything where you do good for she, won't come back to you. Because the more contented your woman, the more of your woman you want to get. In every way. So if you if you got a job, you're helping with the job. Girl, that's extraordinary. You know, I'll send me for that work. We want to do? You want to put on the show one time, you want to get something. You, you help and get, for make you get where you going. You know, get a more thing for doing. You know, you got, you. So I don't understand that, that logic there. I hear the beliefs we talk about that. But I don't understand that way because it it not make my brother it can't, it not make sense because when you want get back when you when you share with your woman no look here you know what I wish they had some more brother like that well, I'm sure more away there you know but it take one while to for make your but learn that but for me I may always have it inside I mean I think you know I, I may always have it inside but as as you grow more mature you you learn for for put it in a proper perspective. You know what I mean? Because when, when, when you're there at a certain age and you got all the energy, they move fast. You know, you see this, you want to try that, this, and as you get more mature, you, you put out of anything in a perspective. So there's no go rest overnight. Well, hopefully, some guys out there can learn from your experience so they don't have to take 30 years to yeah. learn it. And that's the reason why I don't have no, uh, no, no, no vibes <clears throat> about, um, ab about the share this kind of information because this is not going right. So. I see one of my friends to uh, come from America, come visit me too. You see one of the States girl? One of the States girl. <laughs> Sarita! <laughs> Did you see Carl? <laughs> Alright, well let's get into some matters because I know you want to sit down with the States girl. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but, but like I may say, we, we're good for not just now. Now, this thing where right here, where one lot of the brothers and do, girl, when you're not exposed and when you're not read, and women catch on quicker. You know, for we girl, that's the reason why I tell, think long time a man may say it's a man's world. They want farmer psychology for keep for keep women down pressed to a certain level. Because and once you open the door, the woman see the thing faster for some reason, and and and, and he willing for help, he willing for competitive. That are like the majority of women that I know. I'm sure not all women stand so neither. You understand? I'm sure no other women stand so, but the majority of women who I know, once you get in a break for make them help, they want help and they will help. But if you as a man not secure in your position with where you did do, that could be a threatening type of thing. Yeah, but it, yeah, but you don't have to be threatening because like you know what will be will come to be anyway. And if she there with you, she there with you. And if it going, it going. Better you speed up the process in whichever direction. Just have a good time when you do it. Enjoy it long the way, my brother, and be positive. And you'll get one lot in reward for that. Brother David Sesso, let's get into some matters. This one says, I have this girl and she said she fell in love with me by accident. What does that mean? Ball, you get to go first. I don't believe that. I don't believe that for a second. I don't believe that. Uh, I mean, yeah, by an accident. I mean, how does that happen? Let me explain to you how that happened. How that happened is that as a woman, and I'm men as well, and maybe we all term it differently, is 
I start talk to Brother David. You know me and the man vibe good. So one Saturday now, Brother David single by the way. This is all hypothetical. He called me and said, Ronda, make we go um, make we go to the beach. And I said, sure, Brother David. We are drink two beer, we're going to the beach, we're going to fishing and we are come back. Three weeks down the road, Brother David said, make we go pick some mango girl. I want to take a ride to plus and say while well, we're at it. And so now we become friendly with each other and we start spending time. My intention is not to be attached to Brother David. He's in my bedroom. His intention that no for be in love with me either. Yeah. But over a period of time, all the exposure that we've had to each other and all the time we've spent together cause us to fall in love with each other. So now the one different thing, we never start based upon a sexual relationship. We start upon a different relationship. We're mature into us into a more affectionate, loving relationship. So I can understand what the woman is talking about. I understand too. You know, and um <clears throat> That could happen, but what I mean, the, the question that... He want to know what that means. That's not what that means. That, that she fall in love by accident because she never intend to love you. That's the way he asks. He want to know what does his girl mean when she oh, said, oh, yes, I fell in yes, love yes. by accident. That is what she means. When she started out with you, she didn't intend to love yeah, you. She yeah. probably didn't intend to have a relationship with you. She intended to have something with you, just not what has but come up. He started to enjoy your, comp your company. He trusts you. If you find things in your way, this is the way they look for in a man. Well, long time, maybe she never even know that they look for. But he sense these things, right? And and this is how sometimes you have, that's why you have to be careful. Who you hang out with? You see, because and then now if you know they're in love with she or you know intend for um, go no way farther with she. Alone. You have to make it no quick fast. Because that no get no better than that, you know, and that could be a hurtful situation. And then you have to show that you know a nice way, you know, a way to whereby you know hurt she more than where he and don't get hurt. Because seemingly she would have had her guards up already because they never any intention. Yeah. You know, so uh, make it know as quick as possible and be honest with it, but not play games with it because sometimes when that happened with a woman fall in love with you, now your ego take over now. Next thing you know you want to take advantage of the situation and do it. You know, so that happened. That happened. So, so that you know why that would happen, and that's not easy for you know to happen because remember when you found a woman in love with you, you know this that was a nice feeling, and the ego was separating the brother. And next thing you know, no, you say, well, all right, then I want to take advantage of the situation. No man. My boyfriend told me he loved me, but when I asked him why he loved me, he couldn't answer right away. So I said he didn't then, and he started telling me I am wrong, and I say I just feel like he taking me for a ride. So I don't know him, and I even and I care when we are apart. But to me, he only shows me when we are together. How can I know? Well, let me let me figure out what the question is. Her question is: She does not believe that the man loves her because his answer was not instant. No, and when he asked her, he, she he explained to her, but she's still not satisfied. So she want to know, and she feel that he only show, show her love when he is with her. I believe that we have different love languages. And based on that, we express ourselves immediately and differently. When somebody asks me if I love them, first I might think, what is his love language? What does he relate to? What will make him understand in the easiest way what I truly mean. Some other guys will take some time to think and some people will say I love you because immediately. So we can't judge the love that somebody have. First we can't judge the love based on just words and secondly we can't say that he does or he doesn't love you because he didn't answer the way you wanted because you're talking a different language. Um, I, I, first of all I think one lot of our brothers <clears throat> not even going to that room they for tell you but they love you. Based on a lot of way we bridging, say, <coughs> excuse me, not even take the time, plenty of time for say, I love you. So if that person take the time for tell you, I love you, look on the time and the place when he take for tell you. You know, I will say it every minute. And a lot of, you know, no, but take, check out the time when he choose to tell you that. But if he tell you, why you want to look all over the place for find for a reason for say that he don't love you, he didn't tell you that he love you. You, are, you, you, you dig? I am legally separated. We both have someone else, but me and my ex still mess wrong. We both don't trust each other enough to get back together. So one of the ways in the time they mess wrong. 
Candle hostess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, 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 that was a thing go through. You know, but that I growing up too. I mean, the, the, all the risks where they take for do that. Does it worth it? That the one, lot of risks you they do for, for what? Come on, give yourself. Uh, yeah. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. You know, don't try it, you never work on you know, a separate and no one you know, have other people. Is it fair to the other people who you know, have? I mean nothing you know, they happen. Nothing you know, they happen. Nothing, nothing. We have to check like we both say if it's fair to itself. Yeah. We waste with time, we only have one life and you know, it's a beautiful life. Live it up, but live it up good. Mech we move into a last question today because we definitely have to wrap up morning matters. I am a successful twenty three year old man. And I'm seeing an attractive girl with kids. Hmm. And she has no job. How can I know if she's only with me for my finance? If you're 23 and she don't have one child, she have children. If you love her, I say, examine it with your brains and your eye, not your heart. Because at 23, you two are young. You shouldn't. You should be careful how much responsibility you take up so early in your life, you know. Um, and if you doubt her sincerity, then the relationship starts off on the wrong foot already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I can't say no better than what you say just now, to be honest. Um, I, I, I don't think I could say it no better than what you say just now. Thank you, Brother David. That's a compliment. <laughs> That's the truth, too, you know. Uh, 23, what your kind of responsibility we want to take up? But again, sometimes in our lives, things happen. You know, you know, things happen and you, you, that they are unusual, but they happen. But um, then kind of situation, you are praying a lot about. The man said pray, you go to God. Good guidance in that kind of decision there. You know what I mean? Because from the, thing, from the time you think about it, something wrong. And, and then, like you said, then you're going to mention the, doubt, the, the doubtful part of it. So, um, you know, that's our funny spot there. But I can't say impossible again, you know, but that's our funny spot thing. But in reality, but in reality in our situation, that would think both ways. You have to look on the two things, right? Well, gentlemen, it was definitely a pleasure. It was fun, Brother David. It's always good to see you. I mean, no matter when, even if they're just for 30 seconds, it's good to see you. It's good to, to be on with you in the mornings. Ah, oh, there we go. A little, a little affection. Now people want to talk. No, I like that. I like that. They can There you go. So remember for healing your girl. Don't tell you, Dan Grigga and Brother David, the one word. I appreciate it. And of course, you bring ball too, so I get to spend some time with ball too. I think guys, yeah, continue what we do, you know, like the, with the set things, so you always continue. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I do this for you, they're not just for me, you know, no, no. Thing and it's still a teller, we see when we come to the what he said about the studio, they're not for me, you know. Yeah. Alright, so this thing is started and it's still coming. Yeah, it's still continuing. Beautiful thing, beautiful man, beautiful thing. Beautiful. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Guys, until next time, I encourage you to take care of yourselves and each other. This is Ronda Crichton along with Brother David and Tipa Ball saying goodbye. Build your future with Belize's leading development finance institution, DFC. We finance development projects in sectors of education, housing, agriculture and agro-processing, manufacturing, tourism, small and micro-enterprise, and much more, all at affordable interest rates and flexible repayment terms. We also offer free in-house property valuations, free sound financial and technical guidance for projects, affordable building and life insurance coverage under DFC's group insurance scheme and more. So what are you waiting for? Take advantage of DFC's efficient delivery of loans and related services and get a step closer to building your future. Visit any of our nearest offices for additional information or call us at 822-2350 or 822 822- 2360. DFC, realizing Belizean dreams, your partner in development.